if you are listening and you are so busy at the moment, you've got more jobs than you can deal with and you're thinking, well, this podcast is about marketing and I don't need to listen to that. I really want you to think again because I can guarantee you that there's 20 or 30% of your work, which is actually low margin, it's actually not contributing a lot to your bottom line. The more your marketing is performing, it doesn't mean that I have to do more jobs. It means I have more choice. Yeah, well, marketing is math. It's plain and simple. And once you yeah. understand the math, you can make the best decisions about what to do with your marketing. There's nothing evil about this. There's nothing uh, malicious about trying to, you know, milk you, so to speak, because you want to be milked. For most trading and service business owners, marketing is a bit of a mind bend. What should I do? Who should I use? Can I do it myself? I'm so busy, why should I even think about marketing? And how the heck do you know if your marketing is actually even working? Tune into today's podcast where we dig into the most important calculation you can make to figure out whether your marketing activities are actually making you money. Well, hi there team, Tony Fraser-Jones here, uh, host of the Profitable Trading Podcast. Uh, Looking forward to today's episode with uh, my sidekick, Phil Smith. How you going there, brother? Yeah, good, good, always good. Yeah, you always good. Always good, mate. I'm good, I'm good, I'm great. Hey, remember, we're not supposed to uh, riff at the start. Right, I apologise. Sorry, Damon. Damon, Damon, we're sorry. Yeah, Damon's our marketing guy, so we'll get into the meat of the uh, episode. What are we talking about, mate? Mate, we're talking about marketing. So uh, oh, I think for most business owners, marketing is a bit of a dark art, right? Uh, you know, they say, think to themselves, what should I do? Who should I get to help me? Can I do it by myself? Or do I even need to do any marketing? You know, we're busy already. Uh, but today we get into the heart of a marketing issue, which is how to assess whether your marketing investment's actually making you any money. Yeah, and this is a really tough one. You know, for a lot of trading and service business owners, uh, you know, your agencies will show you all the clicks and the likes and the comments uh, as though that actually counts for something. Yeah. Uh, when you as a business owner just want to know how much money is my marketing actually putting in my bank account? Yeah, and I think don't get fooled by those new metrics. Uh, Dan Kennedy, I love a little quote by him, is there's no such thing as new metrics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's such an old school guy, but man, like... The amount of times he's right, eh? Right yeah, on the money, like, yeah. yeah like, you, does it work? Yeah. Uh, Focus on if, it, if it's actually working, delivering real results, because a bunch of clicks and no dollars is... Uh, is not is awesome. Well, what, what really gets me is you've got other agencies or, you know, radio, all that sort of stuff is like, hey, they talk about getting your brand out there, get your name out there, you know, uh, that'll be awesome. Well, that's fine if you're Coca-Cola and yeah. you've got billions to spend, but, you know, most of us aren't in that position. We want to actually make sure what we do has a direct result to a marketing success. Yeah, I mean, the sheer volume, frequency, and size of of a branding budget, like, it, it has to be so big and so constant and so omnipresent to actually result in jobs. Uh, it's just not practical for, you know, for really most businesses, probably 90% of businesses. So, yeah, today we're digging into how to measure whether your marketing spend is actually working, you know, and delivering the real results that we're after. And, uh, you know, the numbers are actually super simple to understand. I think people often will get a bit tripped up and think this is going to be hard or... You know, I don't know anything about this, or this is this is going to be like this magical dark art that only marketing agencies know about. But this is super simple. Yeah, well, marketing is math. It's plain and simple. And once you yeah. understand the math, uh, you can make the best decisions about what to do with your marketing. That's it. Or how much marketing to do. 100%. I'm I sure actually, we're... before we jump in, yeah, uh, this is not a segue. This is actually really important. If you are listening and you are so busy at the moment, you've got more jobs than you can deal with, and you're thinking, well, this podcast is about marketing. It's I don't need to listen to that. I really want you to think again because... For me, marketing is important for everyone. You know, if you are overrun with work at the moment, I can guarantee you that there's 20 or 30% of your work, maybe even 40%, which is actually low margin, is actually not contributing a lot to your bottom line. Mm. And you'd be much better getting rid of that work and getting some more of the profitable work, that's which it. you can figure out when you back cost your work. Well, that's it. The more your marketing's performing, uh, it doesn't mean that I have to do more jobs. It means I have more choice. So you're either filling a pipeline or you're giving yourself a whole bunch of choice about what goes into that pipeline. Uh, either way, it's a huge win. Um, and if you're overrun with work, well then cool, this is this is a real basic economic principle at play here. Um, there is more demand for you than there is supply. So what happens to your price? It goes up. You know, you can't deny economics. Well, that that's right. Or, economics or you economics. are. That, that's true. You put your price up uh, and increase your margins. But inevitably, when people are overrun with work, it's because they have a lot of poor quality work, which is taking up a lot of time from C and D grade clients, which really, if they knew how to get new clients, that's sack. Yeah, that's And so right. that's why marketing is actually critical for everyone. That's it. Well, let's get into a story because it's a always story. good to kick off with a story. Sure about, have uh, we have a story about uh, our old favorite, uh, you know, the good old time bank, let's call it. So it's a banking story. <laughs> That'd uh, be a great bank name. Yeah, the, the good old, the good time, old bank. time bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and this good old time bank uh, has learned something about business. It's uh, it's incredibly profitable, like a lot of banks. And the way the, the good old time bank works is they got really smart and they realized that if they could write someone a mortgage, a loan, they'd have a client for 20 or 30 years. Yeah. Who'd pay them every month. Yep. Regular stream of income, locked in with a contract. You can't get out of it. Yeah. Well, the only way you get out of it is uh, maybe death or bankruptcy. Or break fees. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> true. Uh, so it's super hard to get out of. Yeah. And so they understood the concept of uh, what we're going to talk about today, which is really customer lifetime value. How do you generate customers that pay you for a long time and give you a lot of value? Now, the banks are even smarter than that because not only do they, the good old time bank locks you in with a 30-year mortgage, it gets to uh, 12 years in and now you've got three kids and you need a bigger house and you want to take the family on holiday. So what do you do? Well, you upgrade the house. Yeah, refi. Yeah, that's Refinance. Right. Buy a bigger house. That's it. Yeah, put some money on the loan to get a bigger car and uh, go on a holiday. Refinance, fantastic. And then they're even smarter than that. Well, you need some insurance. So they sell you the insurance. Oh, you need a credit card as well. So they've got the credit card. And you're finally starting to get on top of things and you think about investing and they've got uh, like retirement funds you can invest in too. Yep. So they got you tied in from every way possible because yep. they understand the lifetime value of a client. 100%. Basically, they're trying to milk you for all you're worth. Yep. I think the big thing here, though, is that, uh, and I want to just point this out, because I think it's always important when we talk sales and marketing, is um, a lot of you might have listened to that and think, oh, man, that old good old time with bank trying to get its hooks in me. And I'm like, hang on, the good old time bank just provided you with everything you've ever wanted. Uh, there's nothing evil about this. There's nothing uh, malicious about trying to, you know, milk you, so to speak, because you want to be milked. You know, like you think about a cow walking along, dairy cow, and it's got its udders just full to busting. It wants to be milked. So uh, I I'm think you clarified that. It was, it was going to awkward places. Well, yeah, but my point is, is like in this case, you know, you got to think about this with your clients is when you're looking for extending, you know, things like lifetime value of your client, um, what you're actually doing is solving lifetime problems for your client. Uh, which is a really actually quite a noble act. And if you're not trying to do this, then what you're doing is that you're solving a problem for your client and then throwing them to the wolves. Why would you do that? Yeah, you know, not good this business. Is, this is actually a win-win, and I think you need to look at it that way. Yeah. purpose of the story is uh, the lifetime value is incredibly powerful. Get the client once, and you you know love them long time. Yeah, that's uh, it. Look after them for the long time. And uh, imagine in your business, if every customer you ever approached turned into a 30-year client, then that's that it. would be incredible. You'd have a, an amazing business. Yeah. That's right. And I think the thing is, if we don't understand the maths behind the marketing, then this gets really hard and we run into some problems. We do. And we'll waste money on marketing uh, that doesn't work for a start. We don't understand the numbers. Uh, you'll not spend enough money on marketing Yeah, that does work because yep. you don't understand the economics of it. So if you don't understand the return, you probably uh, you know miss out on opportunities you could have taken. This happens a lot. You actually get taken in by all those slick salespeople who actually sell marketing services. Mm -hmm. uh, and we all get emails and calls from them you know, every week uh, because you don't really feel like you understand what they're actually talking about. You don't understand the numbers of, of marketing, the math. Yeah. And it means you don't focus strong enough on customer retention as well because holding a customer once you've got them through your marketing is actually one of the keys to success to making your marketing pay. Yeah. And your business revenue and profits, they just won't grow as quickly as you want. No. If you're not across the math. Yeah, super frustrating. You just feel out of control. You, know, you, you do. You can't do anything about it. So on the other hand, if we understand the math, then uh, big, big upside. Well, the first thing is you stop wasting money on marketing that doesn't work. That's the first thing. The second thing, you'll spend your money on the marketing that does work, which is incredibly important. And that's a big problem for a lot of people. Uh, you'll be laser focused in providing great service and customer experience because you'll actually see how important the repeat business is. This is a huge part of making your marketing work. You'll feel much more confident in your decision making. You know, when you get all those agency types and AdWords, Google Ads and, and uh, social media agencies, you'll you'll have an understanding of what it takes to make that stuff successful rather than just get sucked in by the slick sales talk, which mm. I think often happens. And your revenue and profit are going to grow way more quickly, which is yeah. happy days. Yeah, happy days. What we're here to do, right? 100%. That's right. Well, That's my first 100%. Today? I've said 100% about six times. I Today? Think. Yeah. Yeah. I think you actually might have said it more as well. Uh, so for those of you listening that have been uh, missing out on the 100% action, uh, you can 100% get 100% all day. 100%. <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's uh, let's dig into how to do this. Yeah. Two things that you need to understand to get the most from your, your marketing uh, spend and get it to work. The first thing, as we've talked about, is the customer lifetime value. So that is a real simple concept. It's just how much is this customer worth to you over their lifetime? Well, their lifetime with you. 
<laughs> and yeah, if you do a good job, that, it yeah. will be their lifetime, right? Yeah, well, ideally, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's a real simple concept. And maybe the, the best way is just to, just to give some numbers. Uh, let's say you secure a new building contractor or a general contractor. And let's say this person, uh, their business gives you five jobs a year, and those jobs are $15,000. Yep. That's seventy five k in revenue. Yep. Uh, and they're going to stick with us for three years, which is not a long time. Better so than one, though. Better than one. So over three years, that's $225,000 in revenue. Yep. That's their customer lifetime value in revenue. Then we just need to, uh, you know, apply the profit margin to that to figure out how much gross profit we'll make. Let's say it's 35%. So 35% of 250, uh, 225K is 78,750. Let's yeah. call it 79K. Yep. That's the customer lifetime value. That's yep. how much that client is worth to you over their lifetime. Super simple concept. How many jobs? How much is the job worth? How many years? Multiplied by the, the profit margin. Yeah, and I mean, this goes for any type of work. Like if you look at, let's say you do, uh, you know, more your sort of servicing, you know, job and work, then, you know, you get down to Mr. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Jones, you know, down the road. Mrs. She, Jones. Yeah, Mrs. Jones, she calls you up. Uh, this time it's about a, a leaky tap, leaky faucet. Uh, and you go over there and uh, let's say she only does one job a year with you, something like a leaky tap, leaky tap or faucet. Uh, you know, it might be about 500 bucks, something like that. And again, it might be one $500 job per year. But every year she's got something. Uh, she calls you every year for five years. So it's $2,500 in revenue. And with this type of work, you have a 50% margin, uh, which means that over that five years, uh, you make 1250 bucks from her uh, in gross margin. Um, and so that's your that's your CLV, your lifetime value from Mrs. Jones. Simple that's, concept. Yeah, that's so how that's, much money we made over here from, yeah. from the time that we had. And that's without any other work that might come from that as well. That's right. That's before we, you know, we upsell. It's before, you know, we get referrals from her. It's before anything else happens. Yep. So that's, that's kind of the basic level. Yeah. And so so that's the customer lifetime value. How much is the client worth to me? Yep. And then to make a great decision about marketing, the next bit is what's the cost of acquisition, which is a kind of a technical marketing term. Basically means how much does it cost to get that client? Yeah. Super simple. Super simple. Uh, and so that's, you know, the, the advertising spend you have, uh, you make an allowance for the time you've put in, and you work out the cost. And from there, it's really powerful because all you need to do is figure out is the customer lifetime value higher than the cost of getting the client? Yeah. If it is, well, you can print money. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's a simple thing. Like, if you look at like $1, if I put in $1 of marketing spend and that turns into at least $2 uh, of profit, well, then $1 turns into $2 with this, uh, with this machine. This is a money printing machine. I'm like, how many dollars can I put in? <laughs> Um, yeah, up to you. And this is a huge problem with marketing. And when you don't understand the numbers or you're a bit fuzzy on that, we have a lot of people ask us, and you might be thinking this as well if you're listening, is what should my marketing budget be? Yeah. Well, I actually, I think the concept of a marketing budget is crazy mm. because marketing should be about return on investment. That's and right. if the return on investment is positive, why do you need a budget? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if your return on investment is positive or really positive, then wouldn't you be trying to put as much budget as you can into Spend that? Spend as much as you can. Yeah. And now, obviously, there's a constraint here. The constraint is your ability to do the jobs. Well, to deliver, that's to right. To deliver, and so that's a capacity problem, and yep. that's how many tradespeople and techs you've got, and have you got enough people in the office to field the calls and to price the work and, and project manage, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But at a fundamental level, uh, marketing is about investment. Yep. Budget is irrelevant. Yep. If you know your numbers and you can spend money and make money, you're in bank. Yeah, that's right. And on the other hand, if your marketing spend uh, is re producing a negative return, in other words, you're losing money on your marketing spend, then hey, look, don't get me wrong, just a quick caveat. I know some marketing takes you a certain amount of spend before you'll get any result, but look at the same time, like if your marketing spend is returning negatively, you're losing money, then you still don't want to have a budget. You want to stop, <laughs> stop spending on that because you're not printing money, you're burning it. Um, so yeah, you, you'd stop doing that. Yeah. So the key is you absolutely need to understand customer lifetime value yeah. uh, and then the cost of acquisition. You got yeah. those two numbers, it, it's pretty easy to make decisions about what you do then. That's right. And this is real powerful, as you said. I mean, like, look at securing that new building contract that you're talking about. I mean, for them, their customer lifetime value was 78750 bucks. Let's call it 79 k uh, What would you do? What would you pay to get that client? I mean, probably a lot. Uh, for that much lifetime value, uh, you know, you've only got to spend one time to actually build that relationship and get that client. Um, you know, you'd do a lot more, wouldn't you, than you would say for Mrs. Jones. So again, I would do something for Mrs. Jones if it cost me up to, you know, a couple hundred, 300 bucks or something to get Mrs. Jones as a client. Hey, it might be worth it. 
Um, but on the other hand, if it only cost me 300 bucks to get the 79k from their building contract, man, I'm crushing it. I'd probably spend a lot more. I'd spend in the thousands to get that that building well, contract. Well, this out. is this is a real challenge too. If you if you are, you know, you own a business, you're thinking about how I get more clients and we love marketing business to business, you know, to other uh, businesses because often their lifetime value is very high. Yeah, well, this because is usually repeat work. Repeat work and bigger jobs often as well. Mm. Uh, not always, but often. And so what most business owners tend to do is they own the cost mentality of, well, I, I can't have, you know, don't want to spend too much money. And so they actually underinvest the amount of money it takes to secure a good client. Yeah. They don't spend enough to get them. That's right. Uh, and so if, if you knew that a building contract is worth 79K to you in the next three years, and a lot of them will be worth more. Some of them might be worth millions if you have a larger organisation. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 100%. So would you would you you know create a marketing system to target them, yeah, uh, with you know ongoing emails and gifts and social events uh, and you know cups of coffee and catching up, you know, building the relationship. You'd actually understand that you could spend a lot of time on that because it's worth it. Yeah, that's right, and it's it's about you know front end and back end as well. Which again, I don't want to take this too too complicated, but I think this is a nice easy concept is you have a front end return on investment and a back end return on investment. So the front end is, let's say I spend $3,000 to acquire this new building contractor as a client. Uh, and then the first job they give me is only 3000 uh, bucks. My front end return on investment is zero. In fact, it might even be negative because at $3,000 revenue, it might have, you know, it's going to have Some a lower cost, yeah. you know, actual profit there. So, so the front end is one thing. It's what do I get in my initial return on investment? But the back end is what do I keep getting over time by, you know, by having that client on the books. And in this case, like, you know, again, if I'm getting up to that 79K, for example, that we used, um, the back end investment is really where I make the money. And so some clients are not going to have so much of a back end, and so you need a win big on the front. Others are going to have a huge back end, so it's okay even to have a loss leader at the front, uh, just to make sure that you secure that lifetime value, which is what we're talking well, about. Well, this is this comes down to offers, and and uh, you know, we work a lot with our members in the Million Dollar Trading Program on how to create offers and and get in front of new potential clients. And one of the offers is simply, you know, free services to the value of $1,000 for companies, for instance, that have a lot of industrial commercial maintenance where you're mm. going to have lots of jobs. They may have an incumbent and uh, you say, hey, look, we'll, we'll do a job up to the value of $1,000 just so you can see how we roll and you can be wowed by our experience. And people are like, well, that's crazy. Why would you do that? Well, when you know it's worth 79K or 100K or 50 or whatever it is, like, it's a no-brainer. It's the easiest, most inexpensive marketing you can ever do. Yeah, and in this case, I think there'll be might be some listeners saying, "Hang on, Tony and Phil, uh, don't you guys you know, avidly say never ever discount your work?" But the difference is, is that's not a discount. I'd put that as marketing spend because this is you know, a cost or an investment that I'm making to secure this client. It's actually my cost of acquisition to secure this client. And actually, a lot of the time for um, you know business to business jobs or business to business marketing, it's actually quite cheap. Um, the real cost is things like you know having an offer involved, um, but actually the marketing itself can be quite cheap in comparison to you know running ads online and things. Yeah, like which that. you wouldn't run ads to get those type of clients. No, That's probably wouldn't. a topic for another day about. Yeah, uh, totally. But, but, uh, we'll but definitely my point get into is, your that. cost of acquisition can look a little different with clients like that, and yep. you can afford to spend a lot more because that long tail, that back end, is is so much bigger. Yeah, uh, so it pays off big time. There's another thing here that when you understand the customer lifetime value and that you need to maximize that so you can spend more money on marketing to get more clients, you actually should want to spend more money on marketing. You want to switch that around to, to, from minimizing to maximizing because you know it brings you bank and therefore you're, you're on the win. It forces you to focus on your customer service yeah. because you know that maintaining the client and having the relationship with them for as long as possible makes your return on marketing so much better. That's you know, right. Like, Customer churn, losing good clients or losing clients through bad experiences is incredibly detrimental to your business. Well, if you look at that building contract that you're talking about, you were talking five jobs at 15K per year over three years. But if I piss this guy off in year one, we have a huge falling out, uh, then my you know my lifetime value is not 78K. No, you know? you're, you're, so, you're struggling to, to, to make it work. That's right. So, you know, it's five times easier to actually sell to existing clients. And there's a reason for that. Yep. Uh, so it's much cheaper marketing as well. Uh, it's things like, well, okay, Mrs. Jones, her average job is $500. Well, how can I help her with more stuff? Maybe she's got some other stuff in the house that she needs. Maybe, uh, you know, she, she wants her water heater check. Maybe she has some guttering that's uh, broken. So yeah. how can I upsell or cross-sell to actually increase 
the revenue from the same marketing spend uh, to get more lifetime value. Yeah. How can I sell to my existing database? As I said, like uh, I think we've done an episode on uh, email marketing uh, and uh, that's an incredibly powerful way to actually nurture your existing clients and increase the customer lifetime value using the same offers on your socials again. Yeah, well, essentially what you want is a full prospect nurture system, which we have talked about before as well, where basically we're just continually marketing to our existing clients. I mean, the thing is they already know, like, and trust you, which is one of the hardest obstacles to get past with new clients. So you already have a huge head start. All you need to do is get them to remember you, you know, get that uh, top of mind awareness or or Toma, um, and also just basically to be aware of things that they might need done. And then that way you continue to get work from them. It's so much easier than trying to find new people from scratch because then you've got to cross that whole barrier of no like and trust from scratch, which is hard. It is. Um, the next thing is you know referral programs. So if each new client that you got actually referred one other client during their lifetime, you double the CLV of that client and so on and so on because then if that person refers someone and that person refers someone and that person refers someone even if each person only referred one other person uh, your marketing spend can drop right off and your CLV of every client actually goes way up uh, and your ROI as a result is just exponentially better I mean that's that's where it gets super juicy that's right uh, in, in effect you're getting infinite return on your marketing spend because one tells one tells one and that's like a you know an exponential growth curve where it just explodes and blows up. That's uh, right. So, and when you understand customer lifetime value, you start to put your focus on those things because you see how important it is. Yeah, and again, the real good example of this. Um, now, I, I can't remember the exact brand name and it might not be exactly this, but actually a lady here in New Zealand uh, invented a, pro- a product called the Waist Trainer. Uh, and basically it's a, it's like a thing that you strap around your waist and uh, you know, it helps you become skinny and all this. Anyway, her entire marketing plan was, I'm going to pay Kylie Jenner a million dollars to put this on and chuck it on her Instagram and say it's cool. So, like, the custom, the spend, you know, the cost of acquisition there was a million dollars for one client being Kylie Jenner, right? So, pretty bad loss on the front end. But now that's a huge global brand, uh, basically all off the back of that one play because the referral, essentially, of Kylie Jenner uh, has really exploded the popularity of that product and now heaps of people are buying it, right? So the thing is, is like the front end was a huge loss leader um, but as a marketing play, she's had this huge back end and it's it's actually a referral play. So, uh, you know, clever play in the end if you got the million bucks up front to Great come marketing. to Kylie Jenner. But, uh, the uh, slim waist without all the uh, gym work. Happy yeah, days. that's right. But the clever, point is, is uh, the marketing strategy there is, is spot on. It's, it's driving the referrals and building that lifetime value of, of the client. Yeah. So the, the, the key message, I think, uh, which is super juicy, is uh, when you understand customer lifetime value and cost of acquisition, then you don't waste money on losers. That's Marketing right. losers. You, and you don't underspend on the winners. You actually spend the money on the winners. And you understand, you know, taking from a cost mentality to an investment mentality. How can I spend money on marketing? Because when I know it's positive return, it's actually making me a lot of money. And you do that until you have your capacity problem. You solve that, and then you carry on That's right. spending money. 100%. So shall we land this plane? Let's do it. Marketing is math. Once you understand the customer lifetime value and the cost of acquisition, you can actually turn your marketing into a cash printing machine. You spend money, and you make money. It's super simple. Thanks heaps for listening. We'll catch you all again next time. See you later.